This is an ordinary TV video game. This is Vectrex. The MB Vectrex, what a lovely, lovely machine. Well ahead of its time and released in the early 80s, but it wasn't cheap and my mum and dad took one look at the price tag and they went, you can forget it. And it's took me a long time to get hold of one, but it's got a really horrible problem. And that problem is it buzzes like mad. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to get rid of your Vectrex buzz. Light pen and 3D imager available. Hello and welcome to the Retro Shed. It's almost New Year and I'm down the shed today taking a look at the MB Vectrex. Now, if you have one of these, if you're lucky enough to own a Vectrex, and I consider this to be one of the holy grails of retro gaming, I love the Vectrex. I always wanted one as a kid. Um, it took me an awful long time to get hold of this one. Uh, but today, um, I'm gonna fix it. Now. It's not actually broken, but what it does suffer from, um, and if you know the Vectrex, you'll know this quite well. The Vectrex suffers with uh, a problem with its internal loudspeaker, and that problem is that it buzzes quite loud. The Vectrex is quite famous for having uh, an onboard buzz. I, I don't know the exact reason why it buzzes, but I'm taking a guess here. It's probably the amplifier circuit isn't properly grounded. It's probably too close to the high voltage coil um, in the back of the Vectrex and the amplifier circuit picks up uh, quite a bit of buzz. I'll demonstrate that buzz now for you. Hang on a minute, if I just turn the Vectrex on. You should be able to quite clearly hear that buzzing. Some people would say that it's supposed to buzz, leave it alone, it doesn't bother anybody, and it's not a Vectrex without the buzz. Um, I'm of the opinion that the buzz is annoying. I've had this unit for a few years now and I really don't like that buzz. I'd like it to be silent. So today, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna modify this Vectrex and get rid of that buzz. I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. So I ordered this kit and it's called the Buzz Off Kit. It's from the United States, from a company called uh, Obtanium Gaming. Um, and I got in touch with a chap who made this called Charles Tweedy. Uh, and he's in the States. He sent this over, it's arrived quite quickly actually, within two weeks, um, and it's a, it's about a $40 kit, I think. Um, and in it you get a set of instructions, um, a Vectrex Buzz Off uh, PCB, or wafer kit, I think it's called. Uh, and in there you've got like a tissue, a syringe that says for oral use only, but I highly suspect it's not. Um, and this is the kit that allegedly gets rid of the Vectrex buzz. So without further ado, let's get cracking and get this kit installed. It came very well packaged in this uh, metal tin here with the little Buzz B, Buzz Off logo on it. I like that. Um, and there's all sorts of bits and pieces that come with the kit and I'll go through that with you in a moment. So uh, let's have a look at the instructions and see exactly what I've got to do. In here, we have step-by-step -step instructions. Here's an exploded Vectrex view. So it looks like it's quite a comprehensive instruction manual that tells you exactly how to take the Vectrex apart uh, and step by step how to actually fit this kit. Uh, this is all in the main instruction manual. Also, we get this quite detailed view of the Vectrex main board and on the actual diagram as well, this taped some wires um, and it shows you where those wires are meant to go. So that looks quite detailed. Uh, and easy to follow. And there's also, I notice, uh, an addendum here for rare models. So step one is to remove the five screws shown in uh, figure one, nice and easy. So the case should now be ready to um, gently pull off the back, providing it isn't stuck. And there you have it, the case is off the Vectrex. I've never actually poked around inside this Vectrex. It's, um, it's pretty clean and tidy. It hasn't had much use at all and it does look in quite good condition actually. I don't see any uh, dust and stuff lying around. It's always been kept in its box as well, which is always a bonus. Out of interest, you can see there that the tube was, the tube is a Samsung 
um, and I believe it was just a basic black and white TV that was bought up uh, in quantity and was modified so that it displayed uh, vector graphics instead of raster. I'm not sure, somebody might correct me on that, but that's, that's what I read. It's just a standard black and white telly that's been modified for the purposes of vector, vector gaming. There's the internal speaker there. You can see it's mounted below the CRT and it's mounted right in front of this whopping big transformer. So do you know what? I am not surprised it picks up quite a bit of buzz. Um, and that cable you can see there that's connected to the speaker goes all the way around the tube and up into, I don't know, in there somewhere. I'm sure I'll find out. Uh, right, step two is to remove the, the volume knob you see there. And apparently it says it's quite snug, so it may require a bit of a pull. Let's see. Yep, that was very snug indeed, but there you go, it is now off. So these two white connectors need to come off next. One's power, one's the XYZ cable for the screen. So these are going to be disconnected now. So this earthing braid needs to come off according to the instructions and is actually not needed. So that can come off. Okay, the next cable to come out is the uh, volume audio cable, which is that one there in the middle of your screen. Uh, I'm just gonna reach in there and disconnect that from the logic board. So the other cable I've got to disconnect is the speaker cable, and that's that twisted one at the back you can see there, and that goes onto that connector there. So I'm gonna reach in there with a pair of pliers and carefully disconnect that. Right, there's the audio cables. They are now disconnected from their relevant sockets. The next step is to remove the chassis from the Vectrex case and there is a warning at this point here uh, about the suction cup on the tube. There's your HT suction cup. Do not touch this at all. Do not place anything under there. Metallic, remove all jewellery actually that you've got on before you go any further because there will be some re residual charge left underneath there. Uh, just one other note before I continue. Um, it does say in the instructions that removing the chassis boards makes the whole unit very, very unstable, which means it can topple, it can fall. And if it falls, you're liable to snap the neck on the CRT and that will be the end of your Vetrex. Uh, unless, of course, you've got a spare tube handy, which not many of us have. So do take very, very special care once you start to destabilize this case uh, that the whole thing does not fall on that, that delicate glass neck. Okay, as you can see what I've done, I've removed the uh, chassis from the main casing and I've laid the Vectrex on its front uh, so it's actually got nowhere to fall now. So that's quite secure. It's uh, it's not going to get damaged lying on its front. And here's the, here's the main board that's come out. There are five screws holding it in there. There's uh, the two on the transformer. There's one there. I think there's another one there and there's one underneath. So there's a few uh, screws holding that entire chassis in, but now it's out. Uh, I can get to the parts I need to actually fit. Uh, and there you can actually see the General Instruments sound chip itself. Right, the next stage is to uh, remove the adhesive pads on the back of the buzz off wafer and attach it to the top of the transformer there. And just to make sure that there's no grease or oil or anything on top of there, um, an alcohol pad is provided. So what I'm gonna do next is clean the top of the transformer um, and stick this board to the top of it. Okay, so the wafer's in position now, and as you can see, we've got these three cables coming off it. We've got an orange and a blue, and we've got a white. And those are marked on this uh, diagram that you get with it there. So here we can see the positions of the white and the blue, and those are the connections on the volume pot on the front. Uh, and we've got a plus five volt feed coming from just above the sound chip. So what I'm gonna to need to do now is locate those points on the board, which looks like there and in this region here. So uh, I'm gonna get soldering and get these attached to the main board now. The, uh, the blue, which is the ground soldered in place. We've got the audio feed, which is the white one um, and the plus five volts is also soldered in place now. So what's next? Okay, the next step is to slide the chassis back in and connect up the cable. So what I've done, I've dropped that back in there carefully. So once the chassis is back in, it's reconnecting up all these cables and it's time for a test. So I'm just gonna put the screws back in um, and make sure it's all 
nice and secure and I haven't pinched any cables anywhere. I should have mentioned this earlier actually, but this audio cable here, uh, you no longer need. You can actually disregard that totally and pull it out. So it goes from that connector there up onto the power board here. Take it out, you no longer need that cable, so you can actually disregard that. Um, the signal instead will go through the wafer and then uh, onto the speaker. So bin that cable, you don't need that anymore. Now the next step is to actually plug the speaker into the wafer connector that you see there. So the Vectrex speaker should connect straight up there and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to route this cable uh, neatly so it doesn't go anywhere near any uh, noisy circuitry that uh, is abundant inside the Vectrex. Okay, so I'm going to turn the Vectrex on now with no sound at all, no volume at all, completely silent. Let's go ahead and flick that on. The Vectrex is now completely buzz free. I've put it back together again as you can see. And although I've got the volume right down on the console itself, let me turn the volume up a sec. So we've got sound coming from the Vectrex. If I have a listen in the back here, I can very faintly hear the, um, the deflection coils, which you'd expect, but the actual buzzing has completely gone. Now in the kit, as well as the wafer, you also get this volume rejuvenate kit. And what this actually does, um, if, your, if your volume dial in there, it's a bit dark in here now, but if your volume dial is crackly and needs a bit of rejuvenation, there's some fluid here that you can actually squeeze into the uh, potentiometer to clean it and rejuvenate it. The volume control on our one here is very, very stiff. It's tight. It's hardly This Vectrex has hardly had any use at all, um, and it's still in very, very good condition. There's no crackle, there's no hum at all uh, when you turn that dial. So I'm going to keep this kit and not use this. I've always loved the Vectrex. I mean, I first saw it when it was released, and it was, um, it was far too expensive for my parents to buy for me. And I think it was just, I don't know, it was so ahead of its time. I mean, look at it. There's, there's nothing that looks like this. Um, well, there was nothing that looked like this, was there, for the home market back in the day, and it was such a shame it didn't do better. That sounds very nice indeed. Right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Um, have a happy new year if we don't uh, release a video before, and we'll catch up with you guys in 2020. Thank you very much. Take care now. Bye-bye.